the solution to this example, the first thing we want to do is just pull through the actual dates. So because that's a 4, and if I look at one of these, the fourth month is April. So I want a function that will perhaps start in one of these cells and then go forward to the right and pick up the correct name. Only problem there is we've got to decide if we start here, if this is the reference cell, if we go four to the right, the offset goes one, two, three, four. So we're going to have to say four minus one. So in this case, I'm actually going to refer to that one. So let's go back here. We're going to do an offset. So the reference, because we're in the actual column, I'm going to go to the actual and tell it to start there and, and put my dollar signs on. Rows, we're in the correct row, so I'm going to put a zero. Columns, I'm going to tell it to use whatever is in this cell here with dollar signs. And when I say OK, it says 30th of April 2013. You can just check it. So I'm going to change that to a 3. You'll see it says March and a 5. So that says May. We can go back to a 4. We could repeat that for the others, but what we're going to do is just tell that cell to equal this cell. We'll put dollar signs in because we know that when we change that 4 to a 5, all of these must adjust. Now let's go to the income statement for the actual month turnover. So what I'm going to do, again, it's an offset. The reference cell, so again, it's actual month, so let's go to income statement actual. Now I could start here, but remember I'm going to eventually, I'd prefer to put a 4 here, so I'm again going to start here. In this case, the dollar sign I'm going to put is only on the H, because you'll see this is exactly the same setup as the summary. So if we copy it down, it'll start at the correct row and then move across. So in each case we're going to say the rows must stay where it is, columns must look at whatever's in there with the dollar sign. When I say OK, it gives me 103110. Let's just check it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 103110. So that one seemed to have worked out. Now we can't copy this across because we can't go across sheets. So in this case, I'm going to have to create these three individually. But it's exactly the same. This is now the budget. Gonna to go to the budget point there, put dollar signs on the H, zero rows, and whatever columns are in there. And the last one again offset. I'm gonna to go to the forecast point there, dollar signs on the H, zero rows that many columns with the dollar signs. So that seems to have worked out and now because of the way we set up the dollar signs I should be able to copy and just paste these down and it should work. It's always a good idea to, just to check so let's just take operating costs in the forecast month in April 1638. So in the forecast operating costs 1638. So that's worked. If we change it to a 3, it should go to 1605. Let's just check. So I'm going to change that to a 3. And that changed to 1605. So that seems to be working. Now we need to work on the year to date. And in this case, it differs from here. This one says, go to the fourth one and tell me what's there. This one says, we wanted to add up everything up to the fourth one. So again, it's an offset. The reference, we're in actual, so I'm going to go to actual. Now here, you have to be a little bit careful. If I tell it to start there, height and width start from the cell they in. So in this case, it's actually better to start over here. And again, I'm going to put my dollar signs, but only on the R. In this case, because I'm in the correct row, I'm going to say 0. I'm in the correct column, I'm going to say 0. 
height's irrelevant. We can either leave it blank, or I'm going to put a 1 there. And then width is how wide do we want it to go. I'm going to just click on that cell there and put my dollar signs on. When I click OK, you'll see it gives me 91840, which is not what I was expecting. I was expecting that to be added up. The reason is we've told it to highlight those cells. We haven't told it what to do with them. So we need to put a sum around it. And when I click enter, I get 381162. Let's just check it. So those four, 381162. When I change it to a three, it should go back to 278052. So just, let's see here. Change it to a three, 278052. Now we can do the same thing for the others. So let's do the budget. So it's going to be a budget. Dollar on the R. Zero rows, zero columns. Height of one. Width of whatever we have in here. Again, I've done the offset, but I haven't told it what to do with that range. So we're going to put a sum around it. And then for the forecast, same thing. It's an offset. Start over here, dollar sign on the R. Zero rows, zero column, height of one, width, whatever's in there. In this case, it's given us an error message, but we can just go and put our sum around it. 226591, let's just make sure that's correct. So we're on the 3, 226591. So that looks like it's working. And we can now just copy and paste it. And now, if I change this to a 4, it changes to April, and it gives us the 4 months up to that point, actual year to date, budget and forecast. Now we want to do the forecast for the remaining period. So we know that it's eight months. So perhaps just to make it clear what this represents, I'm going to create a concatenate. And all it's going to say, is going to look at that cell there. And then I'm going to put the word months. So just as that changes, this will change a little bit clearer. Now we want to do the forecast for the remaining period, which is if we're at month four, it must go to month five and then add up from then onwards. So in terms of the formula, we're going to use an offset again. Now this is the forecast, so we're going to go to the forecast sheet. Now again, because I'm going to step over columns, I'm going to start in this one and put my dollar signs on the H. The rows, I'm happy, are going to stay the same. The columns, I want it to go and step over these four, and we'll see how that works. Height, put a one. Width, I assume I'm going to add up that. So when I say OK, gives me a number. Remember we need to do a sum. And just if we just go back in here quickly, I've left one dollar sign out. So that width should have dollar signs. So it tells me 744401. Let's just check it. So I expect it to add up that. You'll see it's a different number, 771. And that's because we started here and then we went one, two, three, four, and then what offset assumes is you want to add up those. So there's the seven, four, four, one. So then we should maybe change this. So I'm going to actually go back to the offset. So in this case, I'm going to say rather start over here. Put my dollar signs on the R. Zero rows, that's still fine. 
four cross height of one eight seven seven one so that looks correct and now I can copy and paste it down and then finally we just want to work out what our full year is going to be and our full year will be whatever I actually so far plus the forecast remaining so the this one is easy enough it's just that plus that and what you now have is a full fully automated reporting tool so when you're in month one it'll show you what the position is and as you go through this will update automatically go to the correct sheet go to the correct month and add up the relevant periods.